Please be seated. Dorothy Doyle is going to come and give our stewardship thoughts uh, for, this, uh, for this week. So welcome, Dorothy. Give me a minute to do this. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Dorothy Doyle, and I first walked into St. Paul's Church in May of last year. Last May, I had literally just relocated up here from Long Island, New York, having spent most of my growing up and adult life there. New England was my choice for the next chapter in my life after nearly 40 years in corporate America and with most of my family members spread across uh, Connecticut, Vermont, Rhode Island, Cape Cod, and New York. I was raised in the Catholic faith, but had not been a part of a Catholic or any other church community for many, many years. And I knew in my heart that I needed to change that and I also knew that returning to Catholicism was not the answer for me. I was here in Newburyport for about two weeks last May when I drove past St. Paul's for the first time, and I loved the church from the outside. I saw that it was an Episcopal church, and I remembered an old family saying, oh, that's Catholic light. And so I thought, well, perhaps I won't feel too lost or ill at ease if I try St. Paul's. So I Googled the website and liked what I read about Father Jared, the church history, its current missions, its embracing of people from all walks of life, and I liked the bits of humor that were threaded through the narratives as well. So I decided to pull together my brave girl bits and attend service that following Sunday. And by the way, I still try not to refer to service as mass. And from that first walk inside St. Paul's, it was a series of insightful words and kind, welcoming touches by so many members over the course of late spring and early summer last year, which made me know I had found my new church and my new faith. Some of those words and touches, um, after the first service, outside the church steps on a gorgeous morning, a young girl who I came to learn was Elsbeth running up to Father Jared and giving him a huge waist hug and saying, hi, Daddy, with so much glee, and it made my heart smile. Allison Novello coming over to me with a big smile and chatting, and she had her clipboard in hand for the coffee hour sign-ups, <laughs> um, and sharing a common love of gardens, including the church garden. Lori Jones, after another service, telling me more about St. Paul's, giving me a small wooden prayer cross and a devotional booklet, and we shared fair, funny stories about our mutual Catholic New Jersey, New York roots. Father Jared meeting me for coffee at Olive's backyard and patiently and very kindly listening to me ramble on regarding my personal journey. Stu and Ann Tuthill, always stopping to chat with me, usually when I was deep in dirt and dust and not looking my Sunday best when I was working with Allison in the church garden during the rainless summer of 22. Um, Sue Blumenscheid and Bev Brennan making me laugh with their sorry sisters, and if you don't know what that means, you can ask them, ushering antics and warmth. Um, Susan Torpa inviting me to join a book club, and there were so many others. So as I came to know more and more people at St. Paul's, I also was able to find avenues where I could volunteer in meaningful ways, something I had always wanted to do, but during my corporate days, the best I could manage was the occasional group outing at a Habitat for Humanity build site or a group visit to a food pantry. Here, among other things, I've been able to help with the rebuilding of our post-pandemic fellowship with fun coffee hours and brunches. Uh, moreover, I've also had the opportunity to tutor the parents and children of our two lovely Afghan families, drive infectiously giggly girls and boys to soccer or basketball, and deliver meals for among friends. And by the way, um, doing that, also witnessing amazing groups of people who make these two ministries happen every day, every week, 24-7. I was asked to join the vestry earlier this year, and though I warned Father Jared and others that I still have a lot of New York, Long Island outspokenness in me, which might be a tad taxing for my fellow New Englanders, I was graciously welcomed by the team. I've heard many of us say how we are a small church, a small community, that we are at times punching above our weight with what we take on. 
But after 18 months here, I believe I see a commonality in all of the St. Paul's people that I've come to know. It's a shared passion for wanting to make a real difference in the lives of others. And what is special about this and St. Paul's to me is that it drives from a sense of connectedness. Everybody is juggling many balls between work lives and family lives and yet continuing to volunteer for all sorts of endeavors revolving around St. Paul's. And all of that can be truly challenging at times. But what keeps it all meaningful is that we are doing it for reasons that have less to do with ourselves than with others and a common good. And that's where the connectedness enters and spreads, right back through our spiritual connectedness here on Sundays at Service Together. And in a world that is increasingly disconnected for so many people, being able to experience true connectedness rooted in kindness is, I think, an amazing gift and one to cherish. And so for all of these reasons, I pledge to St. Paul's. Yes, in my uh, pragmatic banker's brain, I know that for our church and our community of people to do and experience great things together, to worship together, to be able to continue missions and outreach, we need to be able to literally function. You know, open the doors, turn on the lights, the heat, run the computers and the printers, pay the salaries of good people to keep church life going, upkeep buildings and meeting rooms and myriad other things. And that just takes money, plain and simple. So pledging is fundamentally important to making sure all of that is covered. And then, so that all of the rest of our good works, our spiritual fellowship, and the gift of connectedness can continue and grow. And that is what resonates so very loudly for me when I gratefully write my pledge check to St. Paul's. Thank you.